I'll call to order the uh, Regional Council meeting for Thursday, March the 8th. Uh, roll call. All are present except Mayor Crombie on other municipal business, Councillor Fonseca on other municipal business, and Councillor Bowman's here representing Councillor Gibson in his absence. Uh, also, Count Mayor Jeffries on other municipal business, Councillor Mahoney due to a personal matter, Councillor McFadden's on vacation, and there may be a couple of councillors late due to, to today's events. Uh, uh, and that's it, all others are present. Yeah. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none then, uh, if Councillor uh, Groves would move the minutes of the February 22nd, 2018 Regional Council meeting, seconded by Councillor Ennis. All those in favour? Opposed, if any? Carried. Thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, Councillor Raz. Uh, thank you very much. This would be under other business. It has, it's related to disposal of sharps. Okay. We'll note that. And Councillor Sato, did you want to raise that issue with respect to, with respect to the expense account? Um, bringing, was bringing something. Yeah. So can we add Formally it to the Formally we agenda? have to, yeah. Add. Okay, I, I would add the uh, Councillor's expense policy issue related to the per diem to the okay. <coughs> and that that'll go under other business okay thank you any others seeing none then uh moved by councillor sato seconded by councillor paleshi that the agenda for the march 8 2018 regional council meeting include a communication from the city of brampton regarding proposed mayfield road intersections to be dealt with under items related to public works item 13.1 and further that the agenda for the March 8, 2018 Regional Council meeting include a communication from Don Given, Malone Given, Parsons Limited regarding the Mayfield West and Regions Municipal Comprehensive Review to be dealt with under items related to Public Works item 13.2 and the item that uh, Councillor Sato's raised will be added as well and further that the agenda for the March 8, 2018 Regional Council meeting be approved. All those in favour? Opposed if any? Carried. Uh, before we move on with the agenda, if I may, uh, members of council, I would like at this time to uh, formally announce that uh, I will not be seeking election for the position of regional chair in the upcoming fall election. Uh, I will be retiring at the end of this term after 30 years in public office. Um, I would like to thank members of council for their support, and I am uh, proud of the decisions we have made over the years that have contributed to the growth of this region and making Peel a healthy and safe community in which to live, work, and raise our families. Uh, together with our dedicated staff, we have built a strong foundation for the future, both at city and regional levels. It has been a privilege to work with some of the most talented and professional public servants in this province to achieve these goals. I would also like to thank my wife, Terry, and our three children for their support during my years in office through both the times of successes and the times of challenges. Now I'm looking forward to being able to spend more time with them and our grandchildren. And I also look forward to uh, working with you to serve the residents of this great region and meet the challenges the future months may bring. Uh, together, I believe we've made a difference and I wanna thank you. I think it's the first time in my life I got a standing ovation. Still wearing you know, I've, I've been trying to teach the kids for years, but it never worked, right? Um, <laughs> we have some on the list. Mayor Thompson. I wasn't sure if that's why you didn't have your chain on yet. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. <laughs> well. Frank, I got to say, for uh, putting your uh, uh, putting yourself forward for 30 years serving the community is something that's a huge accomplishment. And I want to say, on behalf of Caledon, I know I've had the joy of working with you as as a regional councillor and now as a regional chair. And on behalf of Caledon, we want to thank you for the the fine work you've done 
and the leadership that you've provided to us. And uh, we're looking forward to finishing out your term as under your leadership, but I want to say thank you for what you've done. And uh, Caledon's been better for it under your leadership and your cooperation that you've given us through CVC, and we've had major challenges. Yeah, I can remember uh, through your leadership with uh, trying to get Osprey uh, Valley, which is a golf course, now it's part of the PGA Tour. This would never have happened if it wasn't for you helping make that happen. So there's different things that we can look through, uh, through your accomplishments, but uh, Caledon thanks you for what you've given the region of Hill. Well, thank you so much for your kind words. Councillor Groves. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to also echo my, my thanks and um, to you as well. I've worked with you as a councillor for a number of years, and you've always been a fair man, and um, certainly I supported you for chair, and I think you have done a great job here representing the region of Peel um, and all its citizens. So um, I thank you for all the years that you've given to your constituents and the years that you have given to all the residents of Peel. And as Mayor Thompson said, including Caledon, we certainly appreciate your support and, um, <clears throat> and your um, advocacy for us little folks over in Caledon. Um, we're not the big city people, but thank you. I wish you well. Um, now they say, now you can go and live the dream, right? <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you. Councilor Yanika. Wow. Uh, geez, I remember 30 years ago, it was a late fall day and you were getting elected up the road and I was getting elected down the road. And to think that was 30 years ago. It's still unexpected. Um, congratulations to you. What a, what a career of distinction. Um, dare I say that it's the nature of the business, but I do not recall in 30 years any untoward headline of any kind regarding you. Any whiff of anything that was... But there's still time. Yeah, any, <laughs> any, any whiff of anything slightly untoward. Um, think you set a record annually uh, along with our former mayor, of uh, getting 80, 90 percent of the vote every time you ran for public office. You were a sort of the epitome of steady, everybody knew of your calm hand, um, mm -hmm. respected, loved in the community. Uh, many know you follow in an unusual tradition. Your father was a former councillor, and here you are now. And uh, well, I got so much I'd like to say, but the other thought that I have in my head, Frank, is and in your spare time, along with Terry, raised a remarkable family. Mm -hmm. So as, as great as we know in the individual that you are in your public life, you're more the man for your private life and the marvelous family that you've raised. And I'm, I'm happy for Terry. I'm happy for Terry. She deserves to have a little bit more of you. But you've served with, uh, distinct, you've served with distinction, with class, with honor. And those are big shoes to fill. But you deserve this, old friend. So congratulations to you. And enjoy it the rest of the way. Thank you, Frank. Well, thank you. Well, I know Terry's happy for the moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Councillor Kovac. Well, Chair Dale, it's been a decorated career, and you are much loved in Ward 4. If I could only follow in your footsteps and achieve the same level of success that you've had uh, here in the ward, I'm reminded often when I go to the doors, uh, where's Frank? How's Frank? How's he doing? Uh, you know, if... if John, if you work hard, one day you'll be uh, a man as great as, uh, as Frank was to us. Uh, it really has been a pleasure, though, working with you and serving uh, with you here at the region. Um, I've appreciated your mentorship, and I wish you all the best in your retirement. Thank you. Councillor Starr. Well, Frank, it's a big, a big decision. I can remember, uh, I don't know if you remember, 30 years ago, you made a decision. It was a little bit before that. And uh, you said, I'm going to run. Uh, can you help me out? Can you work? And, you, and I first thing I said, if you got an office, yeah. And he said, we got an office. Uh, you know, he said, you know what built the rock. Let's, yeah. Well, he gave me an office in the back. The only way he could get to his campaign office was to walk around the back and through the back door. I think he did that so nobody <laughs> knew he was running. <laughs> But anyway, it was a lot of fun, and you know your family was there with you all the time, and uh, you had a very tightly uh, knit group, and it was a tight race, if I re recall that time, and uh, you won, and you've you've given a lot back to the community. So, uh, from all your friends, uh, thank you very much, and uh, you know uh, I'm sure you look forward to a few days off. 
and the hot tub's still waiting for you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Councillor Sato. Thank you. Well, Frank, it's been a great career for you. And I've had the privilege and the pleasure of serving 27 of those years with you. And uh, one thing that I, I don't want to repeat what others have said, because I think Nando said it very well. But one thing that I really want to highlight that um, I think you can take as, uh, as one of your legacies uh, related to the region of Peel is that I had the privilege to serve with you on the planning committee. And that planning committee forged the very first official plan for the region of Peel. And we had, and I don't remember what year that was now, but it seemed like we spent uh, two or three years working on it. And the former Councillor Pileshi was, uh, was the Brampton representative on that committee. But uh, I think that is an achievement that uh, you can be very proud of. You chaired that committee. And uh, we worked very, very hard with planning staff. And I think that was uh, one, of, one of the legacies that, uh, that you can leave for the region of Peel. But I wish you and Terry all the best. And I want to see how long it's going to take her to get fed up with you being at home. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll hear Probably from not too her. Long. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Mid 90s when we. I think it was yeah. 94. Yeah, 94. Right. Yeah, it was 99. Thank you for that. Councillor Cook. Well, um, I guess many Be people. Be kind. The rest have been kind. <laughs> <laughs> many people here might not realize it, but uh, Frank, um, I knew you when you were an employee here at the region. And let's go back even further. I knew your father well, and uh, I used to visit Councillor McKechnie's cottage, which was right next door to, to uh, your father's cottage. And I have many memories, good memories, of, uh, of your family. And Frank, I just want to say that, as you know, for many, many months I've been contacting you and saying, I want to get up to the region and see you and say hello. And here, the first time I'm, I'm back now as a councillor and you're quitting. I mean, you know. But uh, Frank, uh, thank you very much for everything you've done and uh, I wish you all the best. And as a person who is just coming out of retirement for a short period of time, I want to give you some advice. When I retired, my wife drove me crazy. She said, find something to do, get a job or something. So I, I found something to do, as you know, with my books. But Frank, find something to do. And good luck. Well, I was elected along with Nando when you had left. And uh, I don't want you to think that that was the reason I ran or the reason I'm leaving, because you're back. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Thank you. Councillor Carlson. Gee, Frank, uh, I'm glad for you, but it did kind of hit me a little bit hard that uh, my old buddy's leaving uh, the political business. Uh, we have two living examples of what happens after you're gone for 30 years sitting right over here, so be careful. You know, you might get roped back in by the council of 2030 or some darn thing, but uh, I know you've worked hard and you deserve it, and you are living proof that good guys can finish first. And, uh, you know, I know it, we, we, we had a lot of fun. We had a few tough times. We were starring in that movie that had a certain lady's name on the top of it and also playing Frank Dale. So we had to work in the shadow of, of some pretty, well, let's see, auspicious leadership for a very long time. And, and it wasn't always easy to get things done in, in, in the old days. And just when a couple of guys are getting on top of things, we're going we're gonna to lose you, buddy. So I don't, I, and especially after all the pain you took for that chain of office. You didn't even put, it, you didn't even put a dent in it. And, you know, but uh, anyway, you put a dent in our hearts anyway, and I, I sure, I hope that you're, I know you'll be around and you'll still be a, a great volunteer for around the community, but uh, much appreciated. Uh, we need more decent people in politics, and you're certainly one of them. Well, I think you're very kind. Councilor Medeiros. Uh, just quickly, uh, Chair Dale, and, and I don't have the, the, the history that uh, all the councillors have, but I do appreciate the fact that you do have the history. You've never excluded uh, the rookies like myself. You've always had time for us. Uh, you've always had an open door, and I always appreciated those little friendly chats out there. And uh, you know, I just uh, I know I'll be seeing you in my neighborhood. Um, so uh, thank you very much for everything, and I appreciate uh, all the support that you provide, especially uh, someone new like myself. Thank you, Councillor Moore. 
I think we should have just started at George and gone around the table. It would have been a lot easier. But, uh, Frank, I want to thank you. In addition to your contribution to the taxpayers in Peel, you're just a nice person. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that they, uh, first of all, anything bad about you. Um, but you're just truly a nice person. And you must be because I didn't vote for you for chair. <laughs> And you've continued to be nice to me. But, <laughs> but you understood uh, the, the dynamic at the time and was, was very respectful of the, the various choices that people made around the table. And I don't remember a lot about the speech that you made at the inauguration, but what I do remember, on the matter of the region of Peel, you said that you believed that we were stronger together. And so on behalf of Brampton, I want to thank you for staying true to that comment uh, through this, this term of, of council and appreciating the value uh, that the region of Peel has played to our, our three area municipalities. So uh, thank you very much. All the very best uh, in the future. Uh, grandchildrens are the best thing ever. And I know you're going to enjoy every single moment, uh, as you already have, more moments with them. So congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Councillor Parrish. Well, Frank, I can remember when I was on my sabbatical for four years, we, uh, just to keep me calm and sane, we had Friday Club. And a lot of the counselors would come around my backyard on a Friday afternoon if it was good weather. And many a time you came around carrying a six pack of bubbly liquid. And you used to come down and hang out with us quite a bit. And I really miss that because since you've been up here, you've been very, very busy. And I guess so have I, but uh, hopefully you'll make time to come around and hang out with us every once in a while because we will miss you if you don't. I appreciate the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Sprovieri. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just um, just uh, actually, as I'm listening to people, I, I, I remembered I, I worked with a fellow who was one of your constituents many, many years ago when I was working at Ford, uh, Paul Dunbrook. And he used to tell me, I was at the municipal level, and he used to tell me I got one of the greatest counselors you ever want to meet. And, um, and I said, well, who's this guy? His name is Frank Dale. He's, um, you know, I've had some problems, and whenever I call him, he come, come to my door and look after my problems. You know, I, I hope you can be that way too, he said to me uh, uh, when, when I got into the uh, local level. And, um, you know, I... It, it's. Um, I never realized that uh, I went one day. I'd be working with you, and uh, it's been a great experience. Um, I know that uh, giving up um, or retiring is not an easy decision, uh, especially if you love doing your job. Uh, like I think, I believe most of us really love what we do and uh, to serve the, our constituents. Uh, but uh, one word of advice: uh, if you have um, something you need to do, go to the local gym. And hang out at the gym, work out a little bit, you know, and uh, talk to people, and uh, tell them about all your experiences in the, that you've had the last 30 years, and uh, that'll be a very rewarding uh, pastime and uh, keep you fit, also keep yourself in shape. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So almost sounds like he's t telling me I'm out of shape, but, <laughs> quick, but I'll have to tell you well, a quick shape. story of, of Dave Cook, uh, Councillor Cook. He, um, when I was first elected, he congratulated me and he said. You know what, he says, if you stay on 12 years like I did, he says, you're going to end up gaining 40 pounds and losing all your hair. <laughs> so I didn't quite gain the 40 pounds, but you were right on the other end of it. <laughs> but uh, you've been all so kind, and it's been it's so enjoyable working with all of you, and I, I um, certainly want you to keep those sentiments for the next few months while I'm here, too. But, but thank you. We'll, oh, David? Yeah, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if many of the members of council know this, but you and I were in high school together, T.L. Kennedy. Um, and it's, it's sort of like, you know the movie where the two kids grow up together and one becomes a cop and the other... Priest. I have that same... <laughs> um, You're not Irish. I just, wa I just wanted to... I know this isn't a retirement party, but I do want to recognize on behalf of staff um, the guidance and help that you have provided to us, especially through some of the 
challenging issues that we've had in this last term. But uh, also over the years, uh, when you've sat over there, you've been extremely supportive of regional staff. And uh, that has not gone unnoticed and not gone unappreciated. So on behalf of all the staff, I just want to thank you for your support and your help and wish you all the best in your retirement. And uh, good luck to Terry. If she, <laughs> I'm, I'm here if she wants to call. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, David. And T.L. Kennedy's never been the same, by the way. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so which Moving. <laughs> never know. Well, no, yeah, that's right. You'll never know. Somebody tried to burn it down, and they got the wrong building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. Moving right along. That brings us to the consent agenda. Are there, um, if just take a moment to go through to see if there's any items you'd like to hold other than those that have been recommended? Councillor Raz. Raz. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to hold 8.2 and 10.2. Okay. Thank you. Any others? If I could just... Great, thanks. Uh, will you move it then, the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, thank you, Councillor Raz. Seconded by Councillor Pileschi that the following matters listed on the March 8th Regional Council agenda be approved <laughs> under the consent agenda, being items 8.1, 10.1, 10.3, 10.6, 11.1, and 14.1. All in favor? <coughs> Carry. Oh, no, it's a recorded vote. Thanks. And that passes. All right. That moves us to uh, items related to human services. I think there's just one. <coughs> Councillor uh, Medeiros, if you chair this section, please. Thanks. Thank you. Members of Council, you have before you uh, items uh, related to human services. Item 8.2, I believe, uh, Councillor Ross. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I would just like to uh, thank staff for um, uh, considering this and uh, approving, or hopefully council will approve, the uh, the spend on an additional three affordable units. This is uh, Volvo Village uh, typically supports not only seniors in our community, but those of um, mostly of Polish descent, and it's a great addition to our community, and uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to staff, and uh, uh, I just really appreciate this uh, that was considered and uh, will hopefully be awarded. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ratz. Uh, would you like to move it? Okay, moved by Councillor Ratz, seconded by Councillor Kovac. All in favor? Oh, to vote, yes. Okay, that's passed. And now we go on to item 8.3, Social Housing Apartment Improvement Program. Are there any questions or comments? I see none. Moved by uh, Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Downey. All in favor? Oh, recorded vote. Okay, thank you, members of council, and back to you, Chair Dale. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess in the absence of Councillor Fonseca and Councillor Miles, I'll take this section, items related to enterprise programs and services. Um, we go to 10.2, approach the development of 2019 budget. Councillor Raz. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just let me flip to the appropriate page here. Um, uh, question to staff. I guess it's to Stephen. Uh, are we going? Last year we did a coordination with municipalities, where the region went first, and then we followed with the city budgets. Are we going to be following something similar in 2019? So we have had conversations with, or through the chair, we have had conversations with each of the local municipalities. Um, Peel will probably come in front of Brampton and Caledon. It's our understanding that the city of Mississauga staff are 
rolling out the 2019 budget immediately following the election. Um, under legislation, we can't approve a budget until the following year, so in 2019 for 2019. So there is a bit of a, we do have a longer period of time in terms of where council will have to read and digest the document, but I think the timelines for both Mississauga and the Region Appeal are on similar timelines. But there is an extended period of time of having the budget materials in advance in December and not beginning the deliberations until mid-January. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I guess the challenge was when we do both of them at the, the same time, it's, there's only so much you can put in your head. Um, and my other question is, what are the opportunities for budget for public engagement? Uh, at the city, we do teletown halls. Uh, I guess, uh, is there an opportunity when I do public meetings to, um, uh, to perhaps include a, a regional component? We have certainly offered to partner with uh, the local municipalities on their presentations, and, now, and we did that last year with Councillor Sato in a, in a town hall. So if there's something that you're looking to do at a local uh, meeting, we'd be more than happy to participate. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And second by Councillor Moore. All in favor? Oh, no. Recorded vote. My apologies. <coughs> And <clears throat> that carries. 10-4 uh, then, 2018 debenture boring approval. Moved by Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Groves. All in favor then? Nope, oh, again, recorded vote. I'll be all right. And that carries. Uh, 10 5 Ontario Municipal Greenhouse Gas Challenge Fund Award to the Region Appeal. Moved by Councillor Kovac, then, second by Councillor Sprovieri. Recorded vote. And that carries. Um, 11, 2, 3, and 4 all here for receipt. Are there any questions or comments with respect to any of those? They're moved by Councillor Groves, seconded by Councillor Shaughnessy. All in favor, or uh, yeah, they, they're not required. All in favor then? <coughs> Carried. Uh, 11, 5 is for referral. And, six. and 11, 6 is for referral. Moved by Councillor Yanika. Seconded by Mayor Thompson. All in favor then? Carried. All right, that takes us to uh, items related to public works. Uh, Councillor Starr, if you take this section, please. A very heavy duty agenda here. <laughs> um, 13, we're right down to correspondence 13.1. I think that's been a handout uh, to you. Uh, letter from the City of Brampton. Receipts recommended. Any questions or comments? Moved by Councillor Spovieri. Question? Oh, question? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, the motion uh, has been moved by Councilor uh, Moore and myself to um, basically uh, uh, work with the uh, development uh, of the uh, community to um, uh, to resolve some road uh, uh, road access into, from Mayfield into the subdivision. So the motion is before you. But I'd like to say that there's another three other uh, uh, future stubs that need to be built, and I'd like staff to look at that, possibly also including those three into the, um, into the construction uh, of the of Mayfield, um, if, if, it's, if it's possible. And through, uh, can we uh, ask uh, the chair to, uh, or the commissioner to respond, please? You have to put it on, you have to make a motion. Oh, the motion, uh, you have a motion, right? Yeah, but you have, to, but you have to move it. You have to say you want to make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I have a motion, uh, <laughs> uh, Council. I, we handed it to the... Uh, you have a copy. It's been distributed uh, before you. And, um, I don't think so. and this is in regards to the construction of Mayfield Road uh, in, uh, in Ward 9. And um, uh, there's a future development that's occurring. Uh, uh, and the developers are asking that we... Um, 
uh, include the uh, road stubs to into the future development so that uh, three, four years down the road, we don't have to tear up the road again and a new road. And, um, and uh, you want me to read the motion? No, you need two thirds vote to have it. Or to, um, yeah. or to include it? Yes. Oh, I thought it was on the agenda already. No, no it, the motion is not on the agenda. The correspondence is on the agenda. Okay. And based on the new rules of procedure, right. any motion that comes out of correspondence, other than receipt or referral to staff, requires okay. two thirds to waive the rules. Okay, so can I explain why we meet? I like us to, uh, to be uh, included. Uh, to waive the rules. Yes. That, but you're speaking to the motion to waive the rules. Right. Okay. Right. So, so uh, uh, going back to my uh, comments, um, uh, we're looking at uh, putting these road stubs into the road construction today, or this year, this summer, rather than tear up the road two, three years down the road when the subdivision is going to be built. Uh, so uh, this, is a, I believe, is a very uh, proactive uh, measure, and uh, it's going to save uh, a lot of embarrassment uh, from uh, for tearing up a new road uh, three, four years down the road, and, and it's going to save um, also um, um, uh, uh, the, the cost of doing that, uh, that would, which will benefit generally the community that will be building, uh, buying these homes, so that this cost will not be put <coughs> onto the people's uh, homes. So, um, I'd like to um, add this to the agenda, uh, c uh, Council, and um, and um, we need a two-third majority. I'm moving this. Yes. Yep. We do that now. Okay. Uh, I think you heard the clerk. Uh, we need two-thirds vote from the uh, Council to reopen, or to I'm sorry, to put that to on, add. put the motion on the floor. Right. Okay. Would you please vote? I think you have another speaker. Oh, uh, do you want to have this motion first, or do you want to have the speakers? Motion first. Are you going to speak to the motion? Yes. Vote first. Okay. Okay. We're going to vote first, uh, folks. <clears throat> Looks like you got more than two thirds. Well, everybody's yeah, sensible probably. around here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. are you finished or? Yeah, I'm done. Thank okay. you, Mr. Okay, Councillor Moore. Oh, well, thank you. I guess the motion then is before council. It's moved by myself and Councillor Sprovieri. Um, mm. And our staff at the City of Brampton, our public works staff, and generally, um, it just makes good sense to put in the intersections stubs uh, while the construction is taking place rather than disrupt uh, Mayfield Road, which is a, a busy collector road uh, heading straight over to Highway 410 uh, at two, two years down the road or even three years down the road. And I, th I think the motion pretty much speaks to the reasons why that there's no principal concerns with the Mayfield intersection locations and, of course, the necessary uh, agreements would have to be uh, entered into between the applicant and uh, our regional staff. The conversation about the other intersections, I think it's up incumbent upon those other applicants to come forward um, and, and identify it as a, as a concern and an issue for them and staff can deal with those as those applications come forward. But um, I, this motion was um, uh, shared with and in fact uh, uh, Jeanette Smith with a big smile on her face over there um, helped me uh, construct the right language around here so that um, the direction could be um, properly given to staff. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Rass. Uh, thank you very much Mr. Chair and I'm just I guess I'm just looking for comment from staff on whether this is, I guess, acceptable, does it go against our procurement procedures and policies, and are we, uh, uh, in terms of cost, are we able to, uh, is, it a, is it something that's frequently done where you can move up the schedule of construction? <clears throat> Through the chair. Um, 
Yes, we've had a lot of discussions with the City of Brampton staff, and although the, the subdivision planning process isn't complete, um, the city staff have said the movement of those two intersections, they don't have any concerns with. Um, we uh, have looked at it and there's no other conflict with other intersections. Typically, we wouldn't build them till it all finishes the planning process because um, things change. And, um, but in this case, uh, we're getting close to the end. <coughs> And um, while there are some small risks um, that things could change, they're not overly huge. And the way um, we've um, spoken and this resolution reads with the help of Patrick O'Connor, if there are any risks or incremental costs, then we'll have that agreement with the developer. Okay. Uh, I would expect that if the subdivision hasn't <clears throat> been finished yet, but we move forward with making these road improvements, um, the the impacts of all the construction vehicles on those roads, on new roads, is going to be an issue. Well, Where, whereas waiting till later, you do it once. Yeah, I mean, we didn't look at that issue per se. We looked at the issue of stub roads. It was an interesting conversation internally because we have Vision Zero now and we're getting all these complaints about dumping and that led to my original recommendations. Um, I think regardless of when the roads go in, there's always going to be trucks for construction beating down the roads, and that'll get addressed at that time. Okay. Thank you very much. And I appreciate Councillor Raz's question and the response. I, I have a second concern that I'll raise, though, uh, in support of the motion, though. In the second clause of the second, and whereas staff from the City of Brampton Region Appeal have no principal concerns, that wording concerns me. Because by definition, you have secondary concerns. If you'd have said we had no major concerns, what you mean by definition is you only have minor concerns. I'd feel much better if you had no concerns and you could say no objection with the Mayfield Road intersection. Because I hope that's the thought you want to express to me. Because if you say we have no principal concerns, my question is what are your secondary concerns yeah. then? Um, through the chair to Councillor Yannick and, and all members of council. I think what we were trying to get at there that we don't see any showstoppers, but we're trying to be respectful that the city of Brampton hasn't completed their planning process for this subdivision. And while we're not expecting anything to come out of that that could impact where these intersections are going, I don't have a crystal ball to predict anything that could happen. It's pretty close to near the end, but that, that led to that wording. Yeah, I don't want to reword it here now, but what you're saying is and expect that under normal circumstances, approvals are forthcoming. I feel better with that. But that to my constituents would mean, Councillor, did you ask what the other concerns are? Yeah. I, I it just is, feel, I feel a little uncomfortable yeah, with it's it. It's truly the unknowns of it finishing the planning process. Talking to the city of Brampton, they don't think that and there are any big risks, but that's what led to that wording is okay. we don't have a crystal ball for the rest well, of the well, planning I'm, process. I'm glad it was asked and answered yep. for the record, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Mayor Thompson. Thank you, and I, I actually I'm following up on the same concern, and I do know that we're moving from four to six lanes immediately, which needs to happen because it is a parking lot out there now. Um, so it makes good sense that they're going to put the stubs in. Um, so mm -hmm. th I think that's come back to where Councillor Anika and Councillor Raz is. I'm just making sure we're just not getting intersections that are going to impact a goods movement corridor, which that is. And I know even in Caledon along with Brampton, we've had a lot of asks trying to get intersections that we can't get. So I'm just making sure that these are already been pre-planned. And if it is, I'm good to support this because I think this is smart. Uh, doing this and you know I know you talk about dumping but you know Jersey barriers fix that but I, I really think when we're going to six lane this is the final design so it makes sense to put them in but I just want to make sure again just the way it was worded I know it's cautionary but I just want to make sure we're not putting an intersection that's going to really impact goods movement I guess that's my ask. Um, through the, uh, the chair, certainly the road staff, when they review all the requests, there was already in the <coughs> block plan, um, there were going to be two um, accesses onto Mayfield. This is really just a shift. 
Um, so uh, we don't have concerns with those two accesses. Okay. So Taking all the goods movement and everything into account. I, I just want that comfort to know that. And that way I have no problem supporting it because it makes sense. No, right? I cannot promise you there will still not be congestion on Mayfield Road. And I apologize <laughs> up front. I can guarantee even with the six lanes, we're going to have congestion. But it's sure going to be better than what we have right now. And I think the councillors can understand that. So I can support it now that I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Uh, I see no further questions or comments. We have a motion in front of us. No questions, comments? Please vote. It, motion passes. Uh, on to uh, item number 13-2. There's a uh, further correspondence from a loan given Parsons uh, regarding the uh, Mayfield West and the region's comprehensive review. Are there any questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Downey. Thank you. Through you, Chair Starr. Um, in regards to the correspondence, um, <laughs> As you can see, the uh, ROPA scheduled for MW2 was postponed or cancelled. Um, through the correspondence, I think some other details were brought to light that maybe we didn't have before us then. A um, bit of a knee-jerk reaction on cancelling the ROPA. I would like to refer this back with uh, conditions on direction. However, if my colleagues around the table are prepared to support those that direction in the form of a motion, I can put it forward in a motion. Although, like the last item we dealt with, I would need two-thirds in order to deal with that. Um, in, in regards to uh, the direction, it would be to reschedule the public meeting for April, um, uh, to proceed forward, possibly looking at extracting the stage two lands as a standalone priority ROPA, um, and for staff to confirm as soon as possible that the stage two reports have been prepared by Kaladin are acceptable, um, and that uh, the reports, the, these reports have been put through numerous iterations and the commentary are now deemed complete. So. Um, we can go, I can go either way. If staff want the time to look at it uh, and bring it back for April, then we can do that. But I'm, I'm prepared to, to put it through as a motion. I think the importance really is that uh, the public meeting was taken off the table. The purpose of public meetings are to hear public opinion, and that's not going to change whether it's now or in September. Uh, we, need, we need to hear from the public and the landowners in regards to uh, completing our community boundaries. So, would you like to hear the other speakers first, yes. or okay? Yes, uh, well, Mayor are we good? sorry to interrupt, but are are you hearing the other speakers to speak to the two thirds motion to um, bring a motion today, yes. or just to refer back to staff? You don't no, need a two thirds. I think, I think the intent was a motion. motion so, today. so the speakers will be to the two thirds um, requirement as opposed to the actual motion itself, which we. So then we can hear the rest of the speakers. The rest of the speakers for okay, the two things. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Uh, Mayor Thompson. Thank you. I, Councillor Downey, I think it'd be um, timely to uh, bring a motion forward. Um, I think everybody understood. We thought the fastest way to get where we could because we couldn't uh, be ready the same time as the 407 lands in Mississauga. They're supposed to be going in tandem. They've moved forward. It was quicker to run it through the uh, growth uh, the growth committee, but unfortunately with the highway now been deferred, that's pushed the growth committee back. So I really think now we need to pull it out. And I think Malone and Parsons really in the report that you have in your documents this morning, I think it explains it extremely well why we just need to move forward on this. As we're running out of time, we're running into an election time period and for decision making, I think to shove it back to April, that's really going to put staff in a real tight position. I think it'd be better if we could move a motion today. I think it helps staff to be able to move where this needs to go. And uh, I think if everybody's read this report, I think it's pretty explanatory, the, the justification why we should do this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shaughnessy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, um, I appreciate what was said. Um, Councillor Downey said motion, referral, now we're talking motion. I have to say this is in Caledon, but my, my council members or the mayor never spoke to me about it, so I didn't even know it was coming forward. So it's sort of a little back, a little lack of team 
building here. Um, so I would support a referral because I think when staff decided to postpone it, they had some good reasons. Um, so I would support a referral to staff to come back to us with uh, some good reasons to move it forward. Uh, but I wouldn't support um, moving it forward in April. I just looked at my, my agenda and it's pretty darn full and it's pretty darn short notice for people. Um, as much as the developer would like to move it forward, I'm about working for the people and listening to our staff. So I would support a referral, not a motion um, on those grounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, um, I'm... I want to thank Councillor Downey because I was wondering the same thing from a different context. So the province, after we've chased our tail and their tail around for a while, comes down and pulls the, the rug up from under us. The world doesn't come to an end. So you have different plans for the GTA Accord. And I've asked, to be honest, so what does this mean next? And I think this is answering, what does this mean next? Um, I, Barb, I see your point. So how does staff think this plays into it? Yeah, I might like to hear that as well. But life goes on, folks, and we're not going to freeze development in the region of Peel. So I, too, was asking Joanna, what, what, what happens next? And, and notwithstanding the landlord, but taxpayers <coughs> and everybody else, they need to know what the... And, and we as the decision makers, so if somebody can answer me, this is what happens next, great. But I think business has got to move along, and so I'm, I'm glad that it's here. I would like further to what Councillor O'Shaughnessy said, if staff has any reticence about it or any concerns, but I'm of a mind that the business of the day goes on. The province has made a pronouncement. Great. What are our next steps moving forward? Uh, and in fairness, I will say this as well. Uh, election time is when you should be talking about these things so that the public knows what your stand is on various issues. Uh, easier for me to say because I won't be around, but uh, I, think that, I think that's a fair point that, you know, these are issues that need to be discussed. So if staff, I, I know we're voting to reopen, I'm happy to reopen, but I wouldn't mind a comment for staff as to why they think this might not be a good idea because we've got to keep moving the business of the day forward. So I'm sympathetic to the request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pilashi. I was going to ask the same question. I'd like to hear from staff why the original meeting was cancelled. Uh, through the chair. So the meeting was cancelled because of the um, GTA West announcement. All the assumptions that went into the um, where employment growth would happen, <laughs> in terms of what road works would be needed, all assumed that GTA West Highway was going to be there. So it was a pretty big game changer. So we wanted time to analyze that. At the same time, there's a lot of frustration from different landowners, as you've mentioned today, because they want their pieces to move forward. We are uh, digesting all the information that's coming out of the province with the new growth plan. What do they require for an MCR? because it's different than in the past. And we um, want to bring a report to Growth Management Committee, which is just um, less than a month away, April 5th, <coughs> on what we feel it means to date, both the GTA West and MCR, and what is that path forward. And we can certainly um, include um, what does that mean for Mayfield West as well in that report. Um, I don't have a definitive answer because they're rapidly trying to analyze it all now, but it is April 5th we'll bring a report forward. So Jeanette, the, you know, these lands, I believe, um, as stated in the letter, uh, were always out of the corridor protection area. So again, why did we cancel them? Why did we cancel the, the public process? Well, the public process is in, uh, inclusive of all the lands where the 2041 numbers uh, and employment, population employment are being allocated. So this was included in it. So it's two things, the GTA West, but it's also the requirements of the MCR for the 2041 numbers. Okay, but the, the MCR and the 2041 numbers were, were prior to, to this being cancelled. So we took the opportunity of the GTA West corridor. I'm going to bring a the planner news, down. Yeah. And the change in... Adrian, I'll get uh, Arvin to speak to that level of detail for you. Uh, through the through the chair to the councillor, the um, so the problem here is that it was it was one amendment, a growth management amendment, and that amendment, uh, councillor, had our uh, 
population employment numbers to 2041 in there. It had all of the implications of that type of development on infrastructure, transportation, and so forth. But it also had this one piece on Mayfield West, all bundled into one amendment. Um, and uh, with the cancellation of the GTA West corridor, as you can imagine, the entire amendment is affected. And the, the, and the effect of the, of the cancellation of the corridor is um, suddenly you got all of this land potentially that would have been protected for a highway corridor, and now what happens on those lands? Is there development rights associated with those lands? Are those lands appropriate for employment uses, right? Are those lands um, appropriate for development at all? And if you are, let's say, hypothetically, uh, including those lands in as employment, then do we have an oversupply of employment? Because we are already protecting employment lands in Mississauga and Brampton and so forth. So those are the kind of, it gets really complicated. I'm it's, sure it, it does, it, but I'm sure this is out. something that you would have thought about prior to the cancellation of the GTA West. We would have. We, won't, we don't just sit back and, and, and wait for the province to dictate, you know, the potential where the highway route's going to go. We know, we know what our numbers are. We know what, you know, and we're not interfering with Caledon's planning process, but uh, yet we, you know, we don't think that, we're not that short-sighted. We think long-term. So if, for us to take yeah. the opportunity Absolutely. when the GTA yeah. West corridor uh, to cancel this public process, I don't think was <coughs> the right thing to do. So I, you know, I support fully, the, um, you know, reopening this and and putting through the the public process. I don't I don't see why we wouldn't. Like Councillor Anika said, life goes on. Thank you, uh, Councillor Parrish. Well, I hate to say I told you so, but I voted against calling that public meeting before we got the results on the highway mm -hmm. corridor. I am against reopening this uh, after listening to the commissioner and to Arvin. I think with uh, rushing this by four weeks, there's going to be a hundred years to develop all this. And I'd, much, I'd be much more comfortable not opening it now, waiting for a month or however long it takes for Arvin to finish the report and having everything in front of us because the worst thing you can do is cancel it again. So uh, the report comes in in a couple weeks and we go, oops, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have booked it. So I, I'm opposed to reopening it. I'm opposed to these flash motions that come on without uh, sufficient warning and I'm very opposed to ones that come on without staff input. So thank you. Uh, Commissioner and Arvin, I won't be voting to open this, and I think we're getting dangerously close to debating the issue. Or, uh, Mayor Thompson. One question for Arvin. Arvin, uh, this amendment was really on the 2031B numbers. It's not the 2041 for that amendment because what was it was a takeout which we're correcting for the previous, correct? Uh, there's a lot of history here, uh, Councillor, through the Chair. Um, these numbers were actually not within the 2031 allocation from the original Places to Grow growth plan but in amendment. 2006. So now these numbers have to conform to the new growth plan, which is 2041. I will remind you that the approval authority now is the province of Ontario. <coughs> so should we forge ahead and do something that is contrary to the new growth plan, all it's going to do is sit in a file at the province because they are the approval authority. So um, we have to be careful. Um, staff need to uh, bring back a report to you, as the, the commissioner has said. Uh, on April 5th at Growth Management Committee, we're willing to put forward a report that will at least give you some initial consideration of how this can all potentially play out. I think we have to be careful in terms of trying to understand uh, what the potential implication is of moving this forward, knowing that the province is the approval authority and ultimately they will either approve or not approve this. Sorry. So I, like my other Caledon colleagues, didn't know that this was coming on the agenda today, the motion. However, I am, I am aware of, of this um, as I've been working with them through the Conservation Authority on some of their issues. So um, my question though, it's interesting that you say the population isn't in the 2031 numbers. So how is this, 
Because my understanding was this is, they're in the same position that the ninth line lands are in. The only difference was that we were about a month behind in getting all the necessary information and studies to uh, staff at the region, and hence why it, we decided instead of doing a separate ROPA from it, we just threw it into the ROPA on the growth management. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have separated it out. We should have done it on its own um, because it does have its own merit to move forward. So my first question is, can you explain so that everybody here understands what is the difference between these lands and the ninth line lands? Con Councillor, and, and Councillor, uh, I, I just been advised I, you're not speaking to the two thirds. You're speaking to the actual issue. Okay. So then I okay. So then I'll speak to the two thirds. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that I think that this is an important matter. It's not only important for the uh, the town of Caledon, but it's also extremely important for the region of Peel. I think that it uh, deserves a discussion around this table, and so I'm going to ask my colleagues to. To at least approve the opportunity to have a f an open and transparent discussion around this table about this matter um, and then I will ask those questions of staff that I think that we all need to have the answers to. Okay. Councillor Groves. Thank you Mr. Chair. Um, it is an important matter for Caledon but I <coughs> was one of those who sat around this table and listened to what the staff from the City of Brampton said when we were trying to move this forward that it was premature and it was premature because at the time there was no there was an uncertainty around the GTA West quarter there was an uncertainty on the methodology and now the province has come back and the GTA West is, is cancelled we don't understand the methodology and I think that's an important piece that we need to understand um, you know, I, I will say this again. I remember when we were doing ROPA 24, same thing. The province is the approval authority as stated by staff. We are one month away. And I'd like to see uh, what staff- Councillor, you're on the same track. Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> two thirds. Okay, so staff answered the question about when it's coming back in with respect to timing. It's a month away, so I, I will, wait for staff to come back so I can understand <coughs> what it is that they're bringing back and then we're able to make an informed decision at this point I'm not sure that we have all the information to make that decision thank you okay so I just to be clear since we've been bouncing a little bit so uh, we have a, a motion uh, we need two-thirds to reopen Okay, to allow to bring a motion. Does everybody understand that? I think I understand it now. To bring a motion today? Yes. 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 And, and we, we don't even know what the motion is. Well, I can't tell you. You have two thirds. You have to, well, you got oh, to we, we got to be ability to reopen first. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a uh, electronic voting. Yes or no? We're okay? Yeah, so now the motion is that. Okay, and the mover is okay with that? Okay, so the, the motion is to refer it back to staff? Yeah. That's, that's correct? Okay. I think that's what prob probably. Uh, Councillor Moore. Is it possible for Councillor Downey to put it on as a notice of motion today? so that it appears that we refer it back to staff, but there's a notice of motion so we can actually deal with it at the next meeting. Well, I guess it's up to Councillor Down if she wants to do that, but it seems okay. to me that that's... You'll, you'll lose a few weeks. Okay. Are we okay? Okay, so now this is a notice of motion, so we don't need to vote on that. No. I'm sorry. Uh, Councillor Parrish. I would just caution everyone. That if we put a, if Councillor Downey puts a motion on and we discuss it in two weeks and staff still doesn't have their report completed, we may vote it down. Then you're going to need two thirds to reopen it when the report comes. I would caution you to check with staff. You've got lots of time to put a notice of motion in before the next meeting. Our I wouldn't do it now. Yeah, our next meeting's on the 29th, which they may or may not be ready. So be ready. I would just caution you on a procedural thing not to get caught with needing two thirds again. Maybe I'm going to ask staff, can you have it uh, for the next meeting? Some comments. 
uh, through, uh, through, the, through the chair. Um, the report, I mean, we'll have our thinking in place because it's got to go out before the Growth Management Committee meeting April, April the, um, what is it, 5th? So we'll be there. We won't have probably all the uh, I's dotted and T's crossed, but we'll be there. Uh, Council Moore? Well, uh, my point was that they should come back together. I wasn't suggesting that they come back separately, but that at least the notice of motion, the the intent of the motion would be with referral. But it's in, you know, whatever the best way to manage this procedurally. Um, I wasn't suggesting there be a disconnect between the two. Thanks. Okay, it seems like we're back to referral. Is that okay? Okay. So that makes it simple. Okay, uh, electronic voting again? No? Not no? Oh. <laughs> okay, hands up, hands down. <laughs> Passes. Okay, I think that's it. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank goodness. Uh, thank you. Uh, that takes us to um, items related to health. And Councillor Moore, if you chair this section, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. There is 14.1 uh, is in consent. There is an inf a communication item that is here for referral. Someone would like to move referral? Councillor Grove, seconded by Councillor Sado. Is this a recorded <laughs> vote, Madam Chair? Or Madam Clerk? Thank you. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now on other business. Uh, Councillor Sato, with respect to the Councillor's expense policy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, staff have the motion, if they could maybe put it up. Um, I was not at the meeting in January when the policy was approved, but uh, when we got, so I just assumed that the recommendation of the committee was what Council had approved. And when we received the email this week with a copy of the policy, uh, one of the items that was in there which related to the per diem was not what the committee had recommended to council. Um, committee had, staff had recommended to us at the committee an $85 per diem. The committee debated that and our recommendation, which was um, recommendation CEPRC 8 2017, which was on the council agenda in January, um, was that the per diem rate be increased to $75 for meals and incidentals, indexed with inflation moving forward, as opposed to the recommended rate of $85. That is what council should have approved, was the committee report and recommendation. Instead, apparently, the report from staff um, was put on the table and voted on. So um, I am recommending today, I'm moving today, and I think Councillor Parrish is probably seconding it, she chaired the committee, um, that the per diem rate be the 75. But I would also like to ask staff to confirm that all of the other items that were recommended by the committee, which were on that recommendation, have been included in the policy, because I haven't gone in the last two days and checked every single one. Uh, they have been. They and, have been. Okay. Actually, this was a good catch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the motion, now I don't think we have to re, or do we have to reopen? Okay. So first of all, I would move that we reopen the matter of the councillor's expense policy. With that, a, yeah. That will take a two thirds vote. Okay. And then if that passes, which I hope it will, uh, then the motion that's before you would uh, would be here. Okay. Is there anyone to speak to the two thirds? If not, I would ask that you vote. That carries. And then you'll move the motion. Yes, Councilor and Councillor Parrish is second. And seconded Parrish. by Councillor Parrish. All those in favor? Well, it's recorded too. Yeah. Councillor Downey. That carries. Thank you. Um, Councillor Raz on the disposal of sharps. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, question, I guess, to our medical officer of health. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't give you the heads up. This happened last night. I had a resident who uh, was walking, uh, walking his dog and was going through a laneway. And there, was, uh, there were some needles there. So he called 311 with Mississauga. Mississauga uh, said, basically, it's not our problem. And then they called Peel Region Police. Peel Region Police said, put them down the sewers. I didn't know, I don't think that's the appropriate way to dispose of them. So I guess my question is two, uh, twofold. When uh, somebody finds a sharp on the street where they don't have obviously the appropriate equipment, um, what's the most appropriate way to deal with them? And also, can we uh, issue a communications to Peel Region Police reminding them on if they come across or the public comes across sharps what we can do. Thanks. Through the chair, thank you, Councillor, for raising this issue. I wasn't aware of it. Um, so in terms of where residents can return used needles or sharps, there are a number of different options, including the needle exchange van, Peel Public Health Clinics, we have some 24-hour drop boxes, Peel Community Recycling Centers, um, and then a number of other locations. And I can send those out to councillors as well as the, uh, the communication pieces. Um, when the public finds loose needles or sharps in the community, um, there are a number of different organizations, including Peel Regional Police, uh, that are involved in managing those. And you're absolutely correct that the, the place to put those is not <coughs> down the sewer. Um, so private property owners are responsible for removing loose sharps from their own properties. Um, and certainly if they need any assistance with um, uh, safe bins in order to do that, they, I can give you a number that they can contact for that. Additionally, um, uh, Peel Regional Police uh, and 311, it depends on the location exactly where they were about who's responsible, but it could be the municipality or the region in terms of public spaces. This was, this was a public walkway, so it certainly would have been on city property. Yeah, so normally the city would be involved in that. So maybe you can, uh, to deal with this specific issue, why don't you and I talk afterwards okay, and perfect. I can get further information, and then I'll send information out to all council members with more uh, details on this and follow up with the police. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, takes us to bylaws, I guess. Um, moved by Councillor Downey, seconded by Councillor Kovac, that the bylaw listed on the Regional Council agenda being bylaw 12-2018 be given the required number of readings taken as read, signed by the Regional Chair and the Regional Clerk, and the corporate seal be affixed there too. All in favor? Carried. Um, in camera? Oh, sorry, Councillor Parrish. Yeah, one thing I've... I know procedure pretty well, but I never can get it right. When you have a, a section 17 that says notices of motion, do we have to give notice at this meeting to have it discussed at the next meeting, or do I just give it to the clerk? With the new, new rules, yeah. you can just give it to me, and I will add it to the agenda, and the time period that you get the agenda before the next meeting is the seven days notice period. Perfect. So Thank you, you can hand it to me, and I will include it in the next agenda. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Councillor Parrish, would you move us into camera then? It's seconded by Councillor Raz. All in favor? We'll move into camera. Councillor Downey, seconded by Councillor. Uh, Yanika, that the February 22nd, 2018 Regional Council closed session report be received and further that the report of the regional solicitor titled Planning to Manage for Discontinuance of School Board Direct Delivery on Early on Child and Family Centers, Labor Relations or Employee Negotiations and Advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege including communications necessary for that purpose listed as item 19.2 on the March 8th, 2018 Regional Council agenda be received and further that the recommendation contained within the confidential report relating to item 19.3 listed on the March 8th, 2018 Regional Council agenda be approved and become public upon adopt adoption. Um, please vote. Record it.
That passes. Thank you. Um, a motion then moved by Councillor Cook, second by Councillor Carlson, that bylaw 13 2018 to confirm the proceedings of Regional Council at its meeting held on March 8, 2018, and to authorize the execution of documents in accordance with the Region Appeal bylaws relating thereto be given the required number of readings taken as read, signed by the Regional Chair and the Regional Clerk, and the corporate seal be affixed thereto. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Um, motion moved by Councillor Sato, seconded by Councillor Parrish, that the March 8, 2018 Regional Council meeting be adjourned. All in favor? Carried. And lunch is being served early. I feel like I'm back in high school and got early lunch. <laughs> <laughs>